Honourable Senators, I rise today to speak to Bill C-16, an act to amend the Canadian Human Rights Act and the Criminal Court and express my unwavering support, as I have done every time that this issue has come before the Senate. Le texte modifie la loi canadienne. The text amends the Canadian Human Rights Act to, to add gender identity and gender expression to the list of motives for illicit distinction. It also amends the criminal code uh, to extend protection against uh, heinous propaganda set out by this legislation to any part member of the public who is different through identity or gender identity or expression and to clearly set out the elements of proof um, establishing that an infraction is motivated by prejudice or hate based on gender or I gender identity or expression representing an aggravating circumstance that the court must take into account when setting a sentence. Suffer from discrimination in many areas of their lives. For example, they suffer much higher rates of unemployment. They are often refused housing on the basis of their gender identity and they have disproportionate difficulty in assessing necessary health and social services. Combine these factors lead to higher levels of poverty among transgender people. Rupert Raj, a psychiatrist at the Sherborne Health Center, further describes the discrimination transgender people face. He states that 85 to 90 percent of trans people are homeless, unemployed or underemployed. Despite this, some shelters will not even accept them until they have sex assignment surgery. Bill C-16's purpose is to provide transgender Canadians with the dignity they, they deserve. When transgender people cannot fully enjoy the right of employment, shelter, and the right to free expression, they are being denied their human dignity. As senators, we have been appointed to the Senate of Canada to protect the rights of Canadians, including minorities. And I was very pleased that the leader of the opposition reminded us of the, the responsibility of the Senate when he spoke about how we protect the rights of the minorities this afternoon. Through our work, we have protected racial minorities, ethnic minorities, and religious minorities. Today, we have a great opportunity to protect Canada's transgender community, too. This is an opportunity to end their long wait for the protection of their human dignity. Honorable Senators, the provinces are well ahead of the federal government in addressing this discrimination faced by transgender people. For example, my province of British Columbia passed the Gender Identity and Expression Human Rights Recognition Act, which states this bill supports the ongoing evolution of the term sex in human rights legislation by formally recognizing that the term is intended to include protection for gender identity and gender expression. This bill affirms the rights of transsexuals, transgenderists, intersex persons, cross-dressers, and other groups who routinely suffer discrimination based on the expression of their gender or the gender identities they experience. The Ontario Human Rights Court also addresses discrimination based on gender identity and expression. Under the code, all persons are protected from discrimination and harassment based on their gender identity and expression in employment, housing services, contracts, and membership in unions, trade, trade unions, or professional associations. It is time for recognition of transgender rights to be represented nationally, at a federal level. When transgender people are able to express their identity, they are able to live far more fulfilling lives than ever before. Honorable Senators, I remember receiving a letter from Nina, an Air Force reservist, who told me about her experience coming out to her family and colleagues. She, write, she wrote to me, Senator Jaffer, I'm t writing to tell you my story as a member of the Canadian Armed Forces with 35 years service. As far back as I remember, I dreamed about what it would be like if I was a girl. As a small, skinny kid, I was frequently bullied. I frequently wore secretly my sister and mother's clothes. Occasionally, my parents caught me. I was so lucky my parents never punished me as they thought I would grow out of it. While still in high school, I joined the Canadian Forces in the Air Reserves. During my military career, I have been an aircraft technician for more than 30 years. On the night that Saddam Hussein fired a Scud missile that landed a few miles north of Doha Airport, I was changing a fuel quantity probe of CF-18 in the dark with a flashlight while the fuel ran out over the wing. 
During my 35 years of service to Canada, I had many experiences, both good and bad. I've served my country, Canada, faithfully. I never turned my back when the Canadian forces needed me and was always the first to volunteer. I continued to wear female clothing every chance I could. Living in barracks was very hard, keeping my stash of clothes hidden. In 2009, at the age of 47, feeling safe, I came out to my family and the Canadian forces as transgender. I have lived full-time since August 2009. The Canadian Forces were supportive and worked to help me transition in the workplace. Having no more need to be secretive, I, finally, I can finally be who I always was. I, am, I have a much happier life. Honorable Senators, patriots like Nina and other members of the transgender community should be free to express themselves without fearing discrimination. I am particularly concerned with discrimination faced by transgender children who may be exploring their gender and wondering if they will ever be able to feel freely express their identity. These children need protection as they discover their true gender and will continue to face alarming rates of discrimination if this bill does not pass. According to the Canadian Civil Liberties Association, 90% of transgender youth currently hear transphobic comments in their schools, 25% are physically harassed, and 78% report feeling unsafe at school and have missed school, school days as a result. Honorable Senator, je veux... Honor Honorable Senators, I would like to share with you the story of Ryan Dick, who told me about a transgendered child of six, six years of age who knew from a very young age that he was not, not a girl, but rather a boy. This child presented as a boy and went to school as a boy. However, his school did not provide him with a safe place to go, a uh, safe uh, place to go to the washroom. His mother had to leave work to go take her child home at recess and at noontime to take him to the toilets from the uh, service station across the street from the school to feel unsafe, be denied of their most basic needs. As we discuss this bill, there has been much discussion of the washroom argument. This has been hurtful to trans people, as it paints them as dangerous, when the truth is they actually deal with fear of violence when using public washrooms. A poet from Vancouver, Ivan D. Coyot, wrote a poem entitled The Facilities, after talking with a young trans girl about her challenges using public washrooms. I believe it is, illustrates the challenges well. And, and the poet says, and I quote, I can hold my pee for hours, nearly all day. It's a skill I've developed out of necessity after years of navigating public washrooms. I hold it as for as long as I can until I can get myself to the theater or a green room or my hotel room or home. Using a public washroom is the very last resort for me. I try to use the wheelchair accessible gender neutral facilities whenever possible, always after a thorough search of the area to make sure no one in an actual wheelchair or with mobility issues is en route. I always hold my breath a little on the way out there, though hoping there isn't an angry person leaning on crutches waiting there when I exit. Sometimes I rehearse a little speech as I pee quickly and wash my hands just to be prepared. I would say something like, I apologize for inconveniencing you by using the washroom that is accessible to disabled people. But we live in a world that is not able to make room enough for trans people to pee in safety. And after many years of tribulation in women's washrooms, I've taken to using the only place provided for people of all genders. Honorable Senators, when Bill 279 was before this chamber, I received a letter from a mother of a transgender girl that further emphasizes this reality. She told me, the bathroom amendment of Bill C-279 has the trans community, including the network of parents with trans children, absolutely terrified that our children will become the victims, having to go to the bathroom in a room reserved for the gender to which they do not belong. Honorable Senators, the truth is, trans people simply wish to use the facilities that match their gender. In fact, denying this right to trans people only places them at a risk of violence and further discrimination. Bill C-16 recognizes the distinct challenges and realities 
that transgender people face in, in Canada every day. By accounting for the experiences of trans people in, crim in the criminal court and the Canadian Human Rights Bill, C-16 is an expression of the cherished Canadian values, equality of opportunity and equal protection under the law. Honourable Senators, I would like to conclude by sharing the experience of Prof Pro Professor Buchner, an associate professor of music from the University of British Columbia. Professor Buchner graduated from the Juilliard School of Music in 1984 as a piano soloist, and Senator Mitchell referred to her the other day. In 1986, she won the top American prize of the international competition in Moscow, and her accomplishments were recognized by Ronald Reagan. Throughout her career, Professor Buchner has played for the likes of former President and former First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton and many of the world's leading orchestras. At the age of 37, after a lifetime of questioning, Professor Buchner was diagnosed with gender diaspora. Professor Buchner subsequently transitioned to her core gender, which is female. Although her musical talent had not changed, the professor's world she came, came crushing down around her. Prior to her gender transition, Professor Buckner used to perform for audiences worldwide at at least 50 times a year. After her physical transition, she was only invited two or three times a year. The professor was fired from her job and subject, subject to frequent verbal and physical harassment. She told our legal and constitutional committee, and I quote, for transgender fo folks, identity issues are matters of life and death and of living openly, honestly, and freely, without fear of prejudice, malice, or worse, violence. We do not ask or deserve extra rights. We need the same rights as Canadian brothers and sisters of all races, creeds, denominations, and identity. Honorable Senators, I rise today to ask you to support Bill C-16 and have this bill passed before Christmas. I ask you this because the last time when this bill was rejected by this House or not dealt with as fast as it should, I cannot tell you how disappointed I saw the transgender community. It broke my heart. Senators, it would be a wonderful gift to give to that community to say, we senators care and we want to bring you into line with all other communities. Honorable Senators, I have given a lot of thought to the next thing I'm going to say. I really do not want to say it, but I feel compelled to share with you something, the toilet question. I do this today in honor of Charlie. Charlie came to our Parliament Hill and she used our flag on our hill She's a little girl, 12 years old, who came to our committee and said, make me equal to all children. Honorable Senators, I share this story with you. Even my siblings don't know about this. Only my parents and I know. When I was a four-year-old girl, my parents sent me to a neighborhood school. It was at a time when my country of birth, Uganda, was in a British protectorate. Our neighbors were all white. I insisted and begged my parents to send me to a school with my friends, as these friends played at my home every day. They were my friends. I didn't see them as white. They were my friends. I remember being sent home after the third day at school. I remember my father coming to the school, holding my hand. I never knew why my father was so angry. I had never seen my father like that. And when he took me out of that school, I thought I had done something. I was devastated. My father and mother did not have the heart to tell me why I was asked to leave that school. For a long time, when I went to other schools 
and my friends who are uninvited to my home from my, by my parents, I did not understand why, why my friends were not allowed to come to my home and why I could not go to my neighborhood school. When I got older and my dad was a prominent politician in the government, the principal came to, to our home to ask for a favor. And when my dad showed him the door, he said, you destroyed my daughter's self-esteem. The principal said, Mr. Jaffer, you must understand that the parents didn't want your daughter to use their children's toilet for security reasons, as you know that she would be carrying some diseases. Honorable senators, when we make the toilet argument, and when we tell our children these things, we are destroying our children. I will never be the same. I will always worry about who I am. It destroyed my psyche. I share this with you with great reluctance because I don't want to open old wounds. I'm an equal here now and very much loved. But I want you to understand, the longer we sit here and the longer we debate, the toilet, may I have five minutes? The longer we debate about this issue, our precious Canadian children are getting hurt in schools. So I ask you humbly, don't let them get hurt. I did not have any diseases. To this day, I don't have a disease. But for the rest of my life, I carry a disease that I was not good enough as my friends. Don't do that to other children that we love. Let us pass this legislation. The time has arrived. I have opened my soul to you because of little Charlie that came on the hill. I owe it to her. And I tell you, the longer we do not pass this bill, we cause great disservice to our little Canadian children. I ask you to pass this bill and then we work with us so that once we've passed the bill, we will work with Canadians to change attitudes. Transgender people in Canada, Canada are also our people. Thank you. Here, here. Would Senator Jaffer take a question? Uh, Senator Jaffer, um, I listened uh, very, um, very seriously to your, your arguments, and, and I'm not about to, to debate any of them here today. The time will come for me to make my speech. But, but I am um, a little perplexed that you would want us to pass a bill without debate, which you kind of suggested. But we'll leave that aside for now. I, I think all legislation needs thorough debate. I have always supported legislation going to committee, and at some point I will support this legislation going to committee, by all means, um, whether it be in the next few days or in the, in the next weeks. My question to you, Senator Jaffer, is this. I have received on this particular bill dozens of emails, phone calls, letters from the transgender people that are not supporting this bill, from feminists that are not supporting this bill, feminists who are saying they have worked their lives to, in favor of the feminist situation, now biological men are saying they are taking, uh, becoming that. The transgender community that believes there are only two genders, their issue is they want to be the other gender. And yet this bill will allow 70 plus genders to be included in this bill. This bill compels speech. It doesn't just work against freedom of speech, it actually compels certain speech. What do you say to the transgender community that, that says there should only be two genders? No, there are not. My question is to Senator Jaffer. There should only be two genders. They just simply want to be the other gender. Senator Jaffer. 
Uh, to thank you for your question, and I know how hard you also worked on this issue, and I honor that. But Senator, I would be the last person who would say not debate. I'm not saying do not debate. Let's debate. But let's, as we do in on many, on many bills, we work hard on it. But let's make this a debate or a bill we pass before Christmas. That's all I'm asking. Senator, you know, you speak about getting a lot of letters. And I have got them, and every senator here has got them. And, and trust me, I've got many letters. But you know, I truly believe that if you're a leader or a politician in this place, we have, I genuinely believe, we have a responsibility to make every Canadian equal. I'll give you my experience. When we were having the civil marriage debate, can I have two minutes? Two minutes, colleagues. Dave Francis. Great. Senator Jaffer. We were having the civil marriage debate in this House. I received, as a Muslim woman, 10,000 letters of people telling me that I shouldn't support this, that bill. I supported it because I felt, as a politician, it was my duty. To this day, there are some mosques that I'm not welcome to. But I believe that if there is a Canadian that is asking us, do not let this discrimination continue. I, as a politician, have to hear that plea.